Hello, and welcome to our gala panel, centering AAC users in films. We are so excited to have you all here. I am Johnny Dino, and I am a publications associate at RSRN. I'm going to let each of our panelists introduce themselves now. Can you quickly introduce yourself and tell us about the film project you were involved in? Hi, everyone. My name is DJ Savaris, and my documentary film to each inclusion shouldn't be a lottery was first released in 2017. The film feels like a lifetime ago. We began filming it in 2007. I think it was the first time an AAC user was contractually guaranteed that much creative license in a film. I was the co-producer, the narrative commentator, the poet and artistic activist, and the star of the film. I'm honored to be here tonight but eager to hear and learn from what others have to say, so I'll keep my remarks succinct and to the point. Hi, my name is Huan Wang. I am a 24-year-old non-speaking autistic and I communicate via spelling on the letterboard. I attended ASAN's Autism Campus Inclusion ACI, in 2018, where I met Marak Sedgwick. I loved his ideas for the film People Like Me and immediately agreed to collaborate. We filmed around DC, which had beautiful scenery. I was able to communicate my thoughts and beliefs, which was gratifying. It was a very well done film, and Morocco is very talented. I feel very humbled and thankful to take part in the film project. Hi, everyone from Toronto, Canada. Hello. My name is Isaiah Gould, Hello. and I'm 19 years old. I hope to return to my coursework at Harvard Extension School after the pandemic, but in the meantime, I'm really working hard on my independent timing skills and enjoying having the time to participate in cool events like this one. I had a minor role in a short film produced by Communication First Call Listen. It was put together in response to a horrible Hollywood movie that doesn't deserve a mention. It glorified restraint of non-speakers and we responded to that ridiculous notion. Hello, I am Jordan Zimmerman, and my pronouns are she, her. I am a white woman, with brown curly hair past my shoulder. I am wearing a black sweater and sitting in front of a white wall. I communicate by typing and am currently a graduate student at Boston College, studying education. I have recently been involved in two film projects. The first was Listen, and it was made to humanize and spread awareness about real, non-speaking people. The second film is, This Is Not About Me. It is a documentary about being caught in an education system that failed to recognize my potential, and tells the story of so many others. Howdy, my name is Merrod Sedgwick. I am an unspeaking autistic person with multiple disabilities. I am currently working on becoming a learning scientist at University of Illinois Chicago's Learning Sciences Research Institute. I also make art for activist purposes, especially using documentary film and experimental video. Great. Thank you all so much for introducing yourselves. Let's move on to our first question. What is the impact of AAC users telling their own stories and controlling the narrative? Uh. 
I think it's important to say that unless AAC users are the sole producers, scriptwriters, camera people, and editors, they aren't entirely in control of telling their own stories or controlling the narrative. I'm sure AAC users may have produced films in which they controlled 100% of the narrative and told their own stories, but I did not. I had a lot of control over it, but not all. In fact, one thread of my film confronts the tension between my ideas and the filmmaker's ideas directly. I also used having 100% control of the narrative commentary and the poetry and oil paint animation to try to disrupt the outsider's perspective of the camera and the film's overall narrative structure. I believe AAC users being able to tell their own stories and control the narrative will have a huge impact on themselves and future generations. The more stories are told, the more people will realize that AAC users can really express themselves instead of having others speak for them. There are different ways to communicate, and accepting their own communication method will allow them to express their own thoughts and promote independence. We have had the terrible atrocity of well-meaning, but clueless, professionals telling the world what they think our stories are. They deny us access to reliable communication and interpret us wrongly. I was treated this way until I was 13 years old when I finally met my first professional that treated me with new science. I think us telling our own stories will let the world know where to put their efforts trying to help us. People tell our stories way too often. When we are given the power to share our own stories and experiences, we can change how the world views our lives. Someone who is not part of the community cannot 100% accurately represent us. So Jordan says in response to DJ, I can relate with that tension you had with your filmmaker. Human beings communicate with many different languages. The languages we use make us see the world in different ways. AAC is different from other languages. Even if I am using English to communicate with AAC, this is different from someone who speaks English. I know this because I used to be able to speak. Now that I am not speaking, the way I think has changed. How I think now helps me see the world more clearly. When I was a speaking person, the world was like a constant blur. I was always trying to keep up. It was hard to make sense out of the shapes rushing past me. I was good at surviving like that, but it made me very tired. In order to keep up, I had to read a lot. I had to rely on seeing or hearing or reading things more than once. Now that I am not speaking, I can capture information more clearly. I do not know why this is. Each type of AAC is like its own language. Speaking people describe AAC users on foreign terms. They miss out on the ways we think. They miss out on the ways we feel. They miss out on how we live. AAC users must tell our own stories. AAC users are the only people who know what is important to us. If other people tell stories about us, they will always harm us in some way. This is true even if they are trying to help. It is true because they don't live in our languages of AAC. So, 
Our next question asks sort of the opposite. How does excluding AAC users or making films about non-speaking autistics without censoring their perspectives affect the way our stories are told? I'm sure we've all seen that this tends to make us less real. We're seen as less than, and more a figment of ableist imaginations than ourselves. And it's also important for us to speak out when it happens to help educate the general public. But I think it's equally important for us to realize that just because we see an AAC user speaking a lot in a film doesn't mean they've had a lot of say in how the film was edited or created. In seeing films that exclude AAC users, viewers cannot see how AAC users communicate and believe in their communication method. AAC users need to be able to fully express their opinions and perspectives by themselves and not through others. Their stories will then be earnestly told. I think trying to tell stories about a group of people that are greatly misunderstood must begin with understanding. Understanding of any group must come from interaction that is based in friendship over a long time. Without truly understanding us, any films made about us will always be off in some way no matter how well intentioned. Sure. When we are not given the opportunity to tell our own stories, the media seems to continuously use stereotypes to inform their work. A lot of films about non-speaking autistics paint a picture of despair, sadness, and hopelessness, or they show us as all having some special skill. There's an extremely surface-level understanding of autism by the people who are making films about us, which contributes to how society views our lives. AAC users must be included in every story about disabled people. If AAC users are excluded, our perspectives are erased. This misery presents the community of disabled people. If people make films about non-speaking autistics without us, they are still erasing our perspectives. Our stories must be told by us, first. We see bad representation of AAC users in many movies and TV shows. Some people try to say it is sad to be us. They are wrong. What is sad is that the world wants to leave us out. People can decide not to leave us out. They won't know how to welcome us unless they listen to us. Only we can tell them how to welcome us. Thank you all for that. How can non-speaking autistic people start to self-advocate for themselves and for what they want? Finding a network in which they feel essential is best, I think. 
I think I can say that we are most confident when we are advocating for others beyond ourselves. I know I learned how to advocate by watching, meeting, and befriending those who came before me. Jamie Burke, Sue Rubin, Tito, Larry and Tracy. I found my calling in artful activism, but others have found it indifferent. There are so many non-speaking autistic people out there who don't have access to AAC due to financial constraints and therefore cannot self-advocate. Schools need to have access to and to give students access to different communication methods and teaching techniques to find the most appropriate tools for each AAC user. They need to be more open-minded to allow these individuals to use their own communication methods to learn and express themselves. For years, I had been fighting with my school district to accept my communication method but had been denied at every step of the way. Many years were wasted while I was taught with learning materials that were way below my intelligence level, just because I could not express the way they wanted me to. I think speaking up for ourselves in panel opportunities like this one is a fantastic start. Thanks, ASAN. When someone sees something that isn't just, you have to say something. We have been holding back way too long. We need to all work towards inclusion and real representation of our stories in films. Speaking people who do not have a AC advocate for themselves in a number of ways. A lot of their self advocacy includes resistance. Some people think all resistance is bad. Those people label resistance as challenging behaviors. They try to change the challenging behaviors. This is morally wrong. It is also scientifically wrong. Resistance is communication. Resistance is self-determination. Help. EJ says, yes, Jordan, yes. How can we make sure multiply marginalized AAC users are represented in film? I love this question. It's really important. It's important not to just include one person. Multiply marginalized AAC users need to occupy those important roles I mentioned in the question above about AAC users, script writers, camera people, editors, sole producers. We are all learning, not just our audiences are learning. Just because we are AAC users doesn't make us experts on all AAC users. 
I love creating intersectional collaborations and whenever possible being in the minority as a cisgender white male. I used to think I was the one who could free my people by being all that I could be, but I say that now with a smile. For the multiply marginalized AAC users to be represented in film, they must be identified. How do we find them? We should reach out to school districts, groups in social media, and therapists, etc. to find AAC users. With the internet, we can reach out to these users from all over the world. Opportunities such as ACI programs, grants, and scholarships are great outreach methods that attract them to apply to. Also, we need to have funds to find directors, film crew to make films. That should be made available to us more easily. them out. What do you want parents and professionals who work with AAC? We have to invite multiply marginalized people to the table, but we also must ensure they have access to A, A, C. If someone is writing a story or making a film, there needs to be a large diversity of perspectives involved. We must also make space for various voices, so people can tell their own stories. As a filmmaker, I intentionally seek out multiply marginalized people. I make social documentary films. This means I make films about people and social issues. Social documentary always starts with research about social issues. I ask myself who survived the most harm. I try to make films that center those people. I look for a variety of perspectives. But I try to minimize the most common perspectives. In my film called People Like Me, I never interview teachers or behavior analysts. This is because teachers and behavior analysts already get to talk too much. People listen to them all the time. Many people already know their perspectives. Instead, I look for a range of perspectives from AAC users. This ensures that I center the perspectives of people who are multiply marginalized. Let's talk about the impacts films like yours can have. What do you want parents and professionals who work with AAC users, for example therapists, teachers, to learn from your work? I think it's important not to make the film solely about advocacy. I want them to learn I was one of many in my life. I want them to see that I have multiple people in my life, not just my parents, not just one assistant, not just paid professionals or just adults. I want them to see I'm meaningfully engaged, and I want them to see what inclusion looks like. I want them to see me using all kinds of communication to get me meaningfully through my day. 
and want them to know that speaking isn't a prerequisite for the learning to read, write, and communicate. I would like parents and professionals who work with AAC users to know that there are different communication methods that work with different users. One method that works with a user might not work for another user. The parents and professionals need to be open-minded to find the most appropriate method for their child or student for these AAC users to reach their best potential. The parents and professionals should also realize that their AAC users can think and express for themselves if they have the appropriate tool. Being able to communicate independently is so important for a richer life. The textbooks that don't include the latest science about us are wrong. Please update your knowledge so that the autistics you serve don't have to wait 13 years to tell you they are tired of learning over and over the same dreadful elementary materials. I hope people look beyond what they have heard about non-speakers. The ability to speak is not an accurate reflection of what someone knows or has experienced, and A, A, C must be introduced much earlier. Every person wants to share their story and it is so important to acknowledge and deeply listen to all students, as my story is way too common. I want parents and professionals to learn that AAC users' perspectives are the most important perspective. I want them to learn that this is true even if the parent or professional doesn't like the way the AAC user communicates what they feel or think. I also want them to learn about the beauty and richness of our AAC cultures and languages. I want them to learn that we are creative. We are empathetic. We make jokes. We are human. Continuing on the theme of impacts of films, what do you want government officials and policy makers to learn from your work? That separate is not equal and never has been. That natural supports are available if we're allowed to enter these spaces. That everyone benefits, not just us. I want them to see that if we get rid of segregation and insist on communication as a human right, we are all in this world together as we should be. From my work, I would like government officials and policy makers to set policies to give AAC users the freedom to use their own communication method in schools and other institutions to honor and respect these methods. That will encourage the public to honor the AAC user's communication method and presume their competence, allowing them to thrive and have a better quality of life. <laughs> that app is not the only way. We need funding for effective therapies like occupational therapy and spelling to communicate. The systems in place are failing us. There is a whole lot of work to be done to ensure our voices are included and heard, and to ensure our communication and meaningful participation in the communities in which we live.
government officials and policy makers to learn about modern science. Most of the interventions that people use in special education are rooted in behaviorism. Behaviorists argue that their science is the best science. Behaviorists study what people do and try to guess what that means. However, the rest of science thinks behaviorism is outdated. This means behaviorism is expired, like old sour milk. This happened when psychologists realized that behaviorism couldn't explain how brains work. They realized behaviorism was too limited. They developed cognitive science instead. This was in the 1950s. Behaviorism was already expired when applied behavior analysis was invented. The rest of psychology moved on. We now know external rewards harm intrinsic motivation. An external reward is anything someone does to make you want to do something. An external reward could seem nice, like giving someone a gold star sticker. An external reward could seem mean, like giving them an electric shock. Intrinsic motivation means you want to do something because you like doing it. Cognitive science has proven it doesn't matter if your external reward is nice or mean. Any external reward makes people stop caring. I know this because I am a learning scientist. I study how people learn. In learning sciences, no one uses behaviorism. We use cognitive science, which studies how brains work. We also study culture. This is because how people learn in one culture is not always the same in another culture. We all have human brains. But the places we learn are different in different cultures. We must understand both brains and culture. This understanding has led to a lot of really good science. It is unfair that special education is run by behaviorists. Even if science says something is good, we should not do it if it hurts people. AAC users and other disabled people say behaviorism is boring at best, and torture at worst. So what's the point of letting behaviorists control special education? I want government officials and policy makers to learn these things. I want them to change policies so that behaviorism is left in history. Why are we drinking sour milk? We have tons of fresh milk in our metaphorical fridge. Thank you everyone. That was fantastic. Does anyone have any concluding remarks they'd like to show? Isaiah says, thanks everyone. It's exciting to meet all of you, and I'm grateful you're all hard at work. Thank you. Thank you. So Isaiah says, thanks everyone. And Jordan says, thank you everyone. Thank you all so much for coming, everyone. It was lovely to talk to you and hear your perspectives. <laughs>